of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, I did email you the information request for the water and water sewer rate study. And once I get that information, then I'll put that into the um, spreadsheets and then we'll talk about um, rates. Um, I know you guys are getting ready to go through developing a budget for this next fiscal year. And I think that finding out where you are right now, uh, what your expenses for water and sewer are, and uh, where your rates are will help inform that budget process. Also, with um, getting the bids for sludge removal, um, you know, we probably need to do that annually. So we need to plug some money in for that into your budget. So. Uh, there will be some things coming up that we'll need to talk about in that process. All right. Anything else? Anything else is done all week? Yeah, it, it, it's been an intense week for sure. Um, yeah. you know, I know that you guys are working on water loss, and we've talked about water meter replacement. You know, there's just a lot of things that. Um, I think we could spend money on. The trick is prioritizing the things that um, are of an emergency. Um, number one on the list kind of items so that we don't get stuck in um, additional non-compliance going down the road. I think right now you guys are in a, a, a decent state. Uh, uh, once you get the sludge removed from the Sludge holding basins at the wastewater plant, I think that the plant will perform better, particularly in this warm weather. And so that will give you guys some breathing room to do some engineering studies and just set priorities instead of fixing things, you know, just because everything will well. You cut off for some questions. Oh, uh, Mary, cut out your last sentence. Could you repeat that, please? Oh, I, I said that um, hopefully the engineering study will help to develop priorities and um, work that needs to be done first so that you're working on a plan instead of just the emergencies that catch fire in front of you. Mary, I have a question. This is Zen Duda uh, speaking. Uh, yes. In our, uh, you know, attached to in our monthly meet, in our meetings, we have a consent agenda which includes the minutes of the previous meeting and uh, the collector's report, the treasurer's report. So, referencing the monthly budget report, you know, it shows the degree of utilization uh, of the funds in different areas. So. Uh, looking at both streets, park, and water, we're not fully, you know, we're at 40% utilized. This is a, an April report. Uh, so we have still a few months to go. I'm presuming that there'll be some that we haven't spent towards the end of the budget year, period. So when that occurs, if we have uh, residual amounts, can we then apply that to our uh, wastewater plant issues and or our grinder issues, you know, for, for the sewer department? The grinder issues, um, yes. Um, the short answer to that is yes. Okay. Um, unbalances that were unspent in the water and sewer department this year mm -hmm. um, can definitely be used for that. The um, So in a city budget, there are um, like general revenue kind of things that are um, financed by property taxes, sales taxes, things like that. The water and sewer part of the budget are what are called enterprise funds. So in the general fund, whatever money is not spent during the budget year, everything goes back into the big bucket and the budget process starts at zero. Uh -huh. For the enterprise funds, depending on how the city does it, but, um, those funds stay in the water and sewer accounts. 
So that money then goes on toward the next fiscal year, um, and those those don't get swept into the general fund account. Um, and that is because those are kind of a business enterprise, if you want to think of it that way, that the rates that you charge pay for the services and the water that the citizens use. So um, it's a little bit different, I think, than some of the small communities um, do from time to time, just because there's not a lot of sales tax revenue or anything to run the town on. Um, and I think really that's, you guys are in a better position because you, you get part of the county's street tax or road tax. Um, so that definitely helps you. Um, we just have to figure out what those numbers are and um, just kind of delve into the details a little bit further maybe than, than what has been in the past. Okay, thank you. I believe, I believe in the transparent budgeting process. Um, I think that the more people who have the information and understand how it works, the better um, the city is equipped to make decisions. Absolutely. Anybody else have any questions? No? <laughs> All right, well, Mary, uh, I guess if nobody else has any questions, um, I guess you'll be in touch. Yes. And I guess uh, yes. I forwarded an email to April about the, what they said you for their water rain study. And, uh, okay. And we'll get a go on that. Sounds good. Um, I will be out next week, though, just to let you know. So it might be a week or so before I get that sent to you. That's fine. The rest of my month is pretty crazy with travel. And um, for me, so we <coughs> at the first week of July for the start of Bless you. Okay. And then it'll take some time to get all the data together anyway. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mary, for thank your you. time, and I appreciate you um, taking the time out of your evening to join us. So. You're welcome. All right. Well, you have a good evening. Thank you. All right, have a good one. Bye. Bye.
That's Bill. You want me to read it or you want to read it? Uh, make a motion to uh, vote on Bill 998 uh, in uh, the title only. Second. Motion made, second. Roll call. Alderman that happens. Alderman Zinna did not. Aye. Alderman Kathy Burner. Aye. Alderman Brenda Tom. Aye. Bill number 998, an ordinance to establish the city of St. Mary's, St. Mary, Missouri, or St. Mary, Mer Mary, May, <laughs> <laughs> Let's start. That's a lot of mayors and mayors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bill number 998, an ordinance to establish the city of St. Mary, Mayor, with consent and approval of the majority of the members of the Board of Aldermen to appoint officer and certain uh, professional services, which we had the first reading last month, we just didn't get the second reading for the city attorney. So this is, will be the second reading. And <clears throat> the bill number. And the bill number, yeah. yeah. Okay. There is first second motion. All right. Roll call. Um, Alderman uh, Annette Hacker. Alderman Zinnan, do Here, yeah, I. Kathy Berkman. <laughs> Alderman Brady Thompson. Aye. Bill 998 has been adopted past. Bill 999. The ordinance pertaining to issuing a right of way permit to require bonding for, this bit, bonding for business and or contractors on new installation of utilities within the city of St. Mary and designation when this ordinance takes place. In effect. Motion. Uh, make a motion to approve. Second. Motion. Name second and roll call. Um, Alderman Brenda Thompson. Aye. Alderman Kathy Burkin. Aye. Alderman Zinn and Duda. Aye. Alderman Annette Hacker absent. Okay, bill number 999. An ordinance pertaining to issuing right of way permits and require bonding for business and or contractors on the installation of utilities within the city of St. Mary's and designation when this ordinance takes effect. Motion. Make a motion to approve. Second reading. I second that motion. Motion made. Second. Roll call. Alderman Gray Thompson. Aye. Alderman Annette Alderman Zenon Duda. Aye. Alderman Kathy Berkman. Right, so bill, bill number 999, an ordinance pertaining to issuing right of way permits and requiring bonding for businesses and or contractors on new installation of utilities within the city of St. Mary's and designation when this ordinance takes effect. Motion. I make a motion to approve. Motion made. Second. Motion made and second. Roll call. Alderman uh, Brendan Thompson. Aye. Alderman Kathy Burton. Aye. Alderman Zenon uh, Duda. Aye. Alderman uh, Annette Hacker. Captain. Alright. Motion made and adopted. Alright. Bill 1000. We made it. We made it to 1000. An ordinance establishing the appointment of a nuisance abatement officer as a member designated of the Public Works Department by heading only. Is there a motion? Uh, make a motion to approve Bill 1000 and uh, name only. Second. Motion made. Second. Roll call. Alderman Jackie Burton. Alderman Zinnan Duda. Alderman Burton Thompson. Aye. Alderman Annette Hacker. Absent. Bill number 1000, an ordinance establishing the appointment of a nuisance abandonment. Officer as a member designated by the Public Works Department. Um, make a motion to approve uh, yes. the second reading of uh, Bill 1000. I second that. Motion mm -hmm. made and second. Roll call. Alderman uh, Zinnadita. Aye. Alderman Hacker. Absent. Alderman uh, Kathy Bergen. Aye. Alderman Brennan Thompson. Aye. All right. Motion adopted for that. New business. Um, Brenda, you want to discuss the part? Or? Sure. 
Sure, yeah, let's do that. We All had right. a meeting of the committee with uh, the mayor present on May the 8th, and we were, we were initially going to look at the, determine the path forward to compare the cost of relocating versus uh, the actual whatever necessary repairs might be made, needed to bring the existing location up to, um, to make it more usable. But as we discussed uh, the different alternatives and the costs associated with it, the question was raised as to whether we really need to continue with the park because of the cost that it's going to put yeah. the burden on the park, yeah. on the uh, city for the costs. So we wanted to bring that up to the board uh, and have them discuss it and make a motion on whether or not we should continue or discontinue the park. Any discussion on that you guys like to have or think about it? I mean, I'm, it's a, it's a, it's the open for me. Yeah, given the problems uh, associated with maintaining it, the, and policing it, uh, the current drug use that's going on in the area, and the property damage. And the lack of use. And the, yeah, lack of use and the materials left behind, uh, drug paraphernalia, it uh, would seem to be uh, logical to shut it down or at least have something and more public view where stuff can be maintained more easily at a future time. Uh, and my only concern would be if there's, we discussed this before, but uh, for our residents and our voting public, you know, if they, the ones with kids or whatever may I think we need an opportunity to respond mm -hmm. to it. Uh, so, uh, you know, since we're in a public forum now, if anyone has concerns about this, they want to bring it to the board, and this is the time to do it. So, anybody? Yes, Frank. I believe you have an ordinance set up so that if someone wants to use the park, an organization, they can reserve it, and they pay so much for the permit. And then the city employee will come and unlock the restrooms so they can use it. And that, as far as I know, it only happened with Easter egg hunts from the Baptist Church, I think, did too. The Baptist Church and SCORE. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have used it personally for my oldest one for his birthday in May, but I don't know who else has. But it's, it. it's a. Uh, something people are kind of used to and they should have that option, they should stay. You know, if they want to reserve it, have it for an event or anything, that's the problem. Um, yeah, that's really the issue. If, if it should stay, then the, the public should uh, be uh, seen and heard uh, on this. If they don't respond to it, then the assumption is that they either don't know or don't care. Uh, so in that scenario, then the greatest good would be to reduce the risk that we have associated with it and to be a little bit pro, more proactive instead of maintaining something at some expense with mowing, maintaining the public facilities, bathroom, police in the area, cleaning up drug per paraphernalia, et cetera. So that's really the issue and uh, I don't, think that any one person should say shut it down or leave it open, but as a group, I think it's the greatest good to uh, let the public know that they need to respond to it, and if they do, great, uh, and if they don't, great also. So, yeah. so you're suggesting to the next one? What we could do is maybe take a poll yeah. mm -hmm. and see what the community thinks. Sure. Score did a poll a long while years ago and they didn't even know we had a park. A lot of people don't and then you know lately we had some property disruption with the slide getting tore out and uh, the bathrooms got smashed again even though there's bar gates. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the fact that you take a poll would allow the, uh, the public you know the logic would dictate that if you're taking a poll, they would then automatically know that there is a park, so it solves two issues at the same time. Okay. And the Baptist Church didn't have the Easter egg hunt in the park this year because yeah. they've got the pavilion now and they're doing it on their location. Yeah, they expanded it. <coughs> so, uh, this is 
suggest that maybe have a public forum on it and hearing, public hearing? Uh, yeah, yeah, or as April suggested, uh, a poll of some kind. If we're not voting on this, so there's never any yeah. reason to table it or anything because it says it is it is it is discuss the park, which is what we did. Okay. Um, I did well, what I spoke to you about, Mr. Weibrick, since he saved us $600 on the civil mower and that. Yeah. I talked to Annette when she called me. She had no you know, problems no with him. Yeah. Of him going down and cutting that and bailing that. Yeah, that you know, two that way right. we're not spending the expenditures and it's not going to lay waste mm -hmm. too. So and given that he's helped us quite a bit, which is quite a bit, which has saved the city money, then uh, it's a good a viable exchange for yeah. the services. So, does anybody on the board have any reservations or concerns on that? I looked at the deed and I didn't see any restrictions to where yeah. we could not use it for something else that way. That way, it's, you know, it's still yeah. maintained in a way and yeah. it's cut down and managed that way. So it makes sense that instead of us having to, you know, labor, time costs, and everything else, plus it's filling the decal or whatever. You want. So, I just want to get your guys' opinion on it. So if you're okay with it, I'll let Merlin know. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Resolution for the Clean Water Engineering Program grant program. That's for that final one we're going to get for the engineering school. Yeah, it's just, I just need, Isn't that I just need a, basically a motion to have the resolution. All right. So in, in your packets, the application I already submitted with Mary, but you, we as the board have to have a resolution and a bill number signed. That's just per the laws there. We're already good on the application. They just have to get this and the ball's already rolling. So um, the bill's resolution, it's 2024, has been signed. April's under that as well. <coughs> Representative, so if you make a motion, my recommendation is make a motion to approve this resolution so we can get this grant fully in operation and go forward for the plant, wastewater treatment plant, and they, they also included the engineers in that too. Yeah, the engineering services grant, the purpose is it's the first step in yes. handling our wastewater issues. So this is a it's, man, it's a mandatory necessity if we're going to make any progress uh, in this direction. And we definitely need to do that. So I would make a motion to uh, adopt resolution number 2024 uh, regarding uh, the wastewater infrastructure engineering. Is there a second? Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Please contact Frankie or contact Adam or contact the um, police department. Uh, quite, this is maybe an emergency, I don't know, but we have, uh, as I understand it, uh, one of our businesses, Bader's, is having a 50 year anniversary. Uh, do you know what you this weekend? This Are you going to be on duty this weekend? It's Saturday, I'm pretty sure. I think it would. Uh, in St. Louis, so, this is, so yeah, I get some time during the day, but I'll be up in North St. Louis from 6 p.m. until 6 in the morning, Saturday night, or Sunday morning. So it's a night on Saturday night? Um, so, as always, it's an evening, and it's going to be a big one. So we'll need some assistance from someone just to handle yeah. traffic-related issues and any yeah. possible arrest. So, 
because we'll have issues with them parking backwards, forwards, all over the street yeah. when the site says do not park. Yeah, so we have a sheriff's, I don't know if they've hired someone to help with traffic control or anything like that, but that would probably be I can make a sure. request and make yeah. talk to um, Sheriff Seltzer and see if I have a meeting with them and right. see how that goes. I know the last time they had an event like that a while back, it's been a while back, but they um, uh, asked us to close down Third Street between here and Cedar Department in the road and stuff like that. Well, I think we got to have a permit to shut down the roadway that easement, don't we? I don't remember. For a block or something like that for usage? Yeah. I don't know. I'll check on that. I mean, is that what they're asking? Yeah. 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 I'm just looking at the safety concern of this because yeah, I worked there a big one and I had state, county, me, and all down here and went fluid. Yeah, so we need to, this this weekend we need to get on that. Yeah, I mean, because a presence is better than none. Yeah, I mean, all, you know, people, someone could, I mean, even under normal circumstances, it's not common to hear someone backing over someone in their driveway, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm serious. You're right. You're right. Like that. So, oh, no. uh, so, in here, given that the perhaps some decent drinking, <laughs> uh, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Or we judge the sheriff's department also let them know what's happening, and uh, that way they're all aware. Okay. Everybody's safe and happy. Yes. And no one's life is miserable. And they can still have fun and all that. So, yeah. I mean, all right. Uh, police department, uh, Doc. Or <laughs> uh, taking uh, three reports, two saw lawnmowers, uh, and an illegal dumping uh, that I'm still that I need help with, and uh, getting some names in regards to that. Uh, uh, renewed some uh, certifications for our mules. Uh, the last couple days, Missouri uh, Uniform Law Enforcement System. Uh, so, so that is completed. Uh, and I know I've been out of touch for a couple months. I know everybody is aware of, of the family emergency that happened, and, uh, and we are still working. Uh, there, 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 there is not a discharge date in regards to that. So we'll still be up in St. Louis Children's Hospital for months. Uh, and when trying to get back into a normal schedule, my other son had a wreck on 55, uh, and uh, so avoiding a deer. And, and he decided to hit the cement wall with his car. So, so anyway, so so things have been kind of hectic personally in, in Officer Corbett's world. But the uh, but taking three reports, um, trying to get back to some kind of normal uh, professionally and personally. Uh, but, but it's been a struggle. Uh, I'm still available by cell phone, email. Ms. Bergman, I know I got an email not long after it happened, and uh, and that was very sweet of you. So I thank you for that. Um, also. Uh, the property of the antique mall. Today I reached out to uh, Scott Properties and they told me that that ownership <coughs> of that, that land was transferred to a uh, Bobby Fisher, not the chess player. Yeah. But they, uh, the uh, but uh, uh, somebody named Bobby Fisher. So I don't know who that is, but but hopefully they can get that land uh, a little bit more under control with the. Uh, with I the talked to him yesterday. Did you? And it's going to be addressed. Yes. Good. Um, other than that, out of control today. Uh, I'll be here, um, I think, part of the morning tomorrow, but uh, I'll do a little bit better. I'll do better with communication as well. I know, given everything, it was, it's been very, very stressful, but I'll do better with communication, letting you know my schedule and the hours that I'll be here. Um, and hopefully my kids stop running in. So. <laughs> so, but if you, if you need me, I'm, I'm available via communication at any time. So. Oh, and also... I got you a body camera. Oh, is, there, is it here now? I ordered one and I'm donating, I'm donating to the police department. Very good. From wearing all times. And the other car camera is going to be hooked up as well. Groovy. So, um, and stick around after the meeting. Yeah. Uh, uh, fire department. Thank you. Well, we had a total of 10 calls, five medic, two motor vehicle accidents, and I'm uh, three mutual aid calls. Uh, Two of them St. Jan, one of them St. Zora. Um, uh, 51, we had Sentinel work on our new water gauge that we installed on it uh, a few years ago. We tried to get it set up. 
it wasn't working properly the way we needed to set it up. Um, we had done it by book, um, found out that the sensor was bad in the tank. Uh, I guess you get bad sensors, sensors when they're brand new too. So, uh, so it's up and going now, so we can we got the uh, light up LED gauge on the back of it, tell us how much water we have in the tank, instead of what you tell it to go bone dry. <laughs> Anyways, I'm uh, needing to uh, uh, possibly get ready to do pump testing. I know what cost it is to get pump testing done, but that's what helps with our ISO ratings um, to make sure we ain't got any failures in the pumps um, and adequate flows. I'm um, trying to set that up with uh, hopefully Zell. Um, we talked about it. Uh, Zell or Wine Garden, we normally all of us get together at one location and do it on one day. Um, anyway, which I got 41 and 42 that both need to be done this year. Um, so, anyways, uh, that's probably going to take effect. Uh, I'll know more about it here within the next probably month here. Um, the other question is on um, the old 41, old yeller. Um, we're wanting to make more room in our fire house because we're possibly, hopefully, uh, might be accommodating a, another brush apparatus. Uh, that's what I'm trying to go for right now. Um, it help us out with brush fires uh, through the woods and stuff. We need the fields having two brush trucks uh, because I do not have no uh, rolling pumps. So anyways, all my pumpers are stationary except for my brush truck, but that's so heavy trying to get out to the field. Um, so we're talking to the conservation about hopefully another uh, brush unit. Um, but we're going to keep the 71 we have, which um, if we get a new one here, it's going to be 72. Um, because we would kind of go on a combination of it is it more feasible with the side-by-side -side or is it more feasible with the brush truck. And talk to a few departments. Brush truck is the way to go. We carry more water, more material on it if we have to, like shovels and stuff. Uh, side by side, they're nice. Uh, going through like ATV trails or whatever, on, you know, uh, inside the woods. But normally, <clears throat> nine out of ten we're fighting field fires uh, and brush line fires. So, anyways, um, so what we're wanting to do is hopefully you guys talk about you know purple wave before us. So we're trying to see if we could actually put that on purple wave. Uh, we could take pictures of it or whatever and put a starting amount on it and see where it goes or we can just take bids and see where it goes and you know whatever. Um, I was going to talk to you guys about uh, donating to another department that lost everything but I think they all got accommodated on newer stuff. Uh, so I, I mean it's still a good truck it's just it's not feasible for us to have three apparatuses, pumper apparatuses in our firehouse when we're not that big of a you know, town. Because um, like our 41 now, what it does is normally goes to mutual way call unless 42 is requested for commercial fires or whatever, because that's the biggest pumping apparatus we have. Uh, so that's what we're kind of looking into on that. So uh, you guys tell me. Can try to get some situated out for that. Um, hey Frank, it was in, will it still fit over here like it used to be over? Uh, it was still fit over here, you know, um, uh, but I really don't want to move it down here because due to the, you know, plow truck, wintertime, tractor, anything like that. Well, it was sold by then. Well, it's been sitting there as long as it has, I ain't really too worried about well, it. Well, I know, you just, said it was in the way. So. Well, it's not in the way at the moment. If we okay. do decide to, everything works out to get this other truck. Will that be an option then? Yes. Okay. That's what I want. Because I really don't want to drain the water out. If we drain the water out of it, then it could rust the tank, put yeah. pinholes in it. So I don't want to do that. Okay, I don't want to. That one's fixed. Yeah, that, yeah they're going to be Yeah, fine. it's all up and running. Pretty cool. So, yeah, that's so that's all I have on the fire department stuff. No, uh, oh, I want to read it. We did have a meeting, me and Mary, with the public water district over the use of him when we have fires and replenishing to try to get away from rates. I haven't heard back from West yet. I don't know if you reached out or not. I haven't had the time. But that was brought up about possibly when we have a fire or further training. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, that way we can kind of. 
not get billed for a bunch of water for them having to do mandatory training or if we have a structure fire and you know we've got mutual aid coming in and we're refilling their stuff too you know and it's just you know what i'm saying and then we're on the hook for the bill too as well right. so um, i know they had a little closed session afterwards but i haven't heard nothing yet so okay. i just want to make that clear
have two operators. And uh, if anything would such happen to you to have a cheap operator, then there's no way you know what's going on. So, um, and then, uh, well, sewer side, which water side, um, we're going to be going sludge tomorrow. Um, we're going to be falling 110,000 gallons out all together. Um, that's uh, four years worth of sludge. That should have never happened. Uh, but funds, I understand. Um, so we're going to be hauling that out. Um, the other thing is, is uh, I've contacted DNR because we were having a situation uh, where we could have had a bypass and informed them what was going on and stay on top of them about it. As soon as the sludge is gone, we get the plant back in 100%, well, I should say 100%. 95% operation where it's, you know, uh, then I will contact the NR back and inform them that everything's clear and uh, we're good and they'll write it off. But they do know everything's going on right now. Um, grinders, um, had replaced a couple floats on a couple of them. Uh, still have an issue with baiters. Um, still trying to get the baiter bar over here. Trying to get, um, a bigger pump for that since they got more of a facility now. Uh, I already know that they're paying the I guess commercial side of it already. Um, so uh, I'm trying to see if we can get a bigger pump that is more feasible for the material that's coming in on this. Um, I'm still in the works with working with Dan from uh, Flow Systems. Um, uh, working with him, uh, he's supposed to call me back. And let me know what's the next big pump that we can put in there without having to put where you fit. Um, it's working right now, fingers crossed, but don't know how long. Um, so we got that uh, taken care of. Um, the other issue is we still have grinders that needs to be replaced with the new ones. Uh, can't help it. I wish there was three of them. <laughs> Anyways, but I'm uh, having been know we have a lot here lately. And, uh, my son Kyle has been helping out a lot too. Uh, we're trying to get things done, but whenever uh, facilities start acting up, then that's um, uh, a big no-no. So we got to kind of move to that priority. So um, sorry about the situation that's happening. Um, the other thing is, I did get asked tonight. Um, Dean Menard uh, contacted me earlier. Uh, he's got two lots up here on 7th Street that he uh, uh, bought. Uh, one of them's got a grinder on it and a meter on it already. Uh, the other lot does not. Um, so he's going to probably be in contact with trying to see what we need to do on that part. Uh, I had a theory of doing on one part, but I'm going to wait until he's ready for it. Um, the other thing is going to be doing a new water tap for, uh, uh, I guess it'd be Stephanie Mall. Is that what it is? Here, yeah. uh, up on 7th Street. Um, we're going to have a secondary water meter only. It's not going to be super <coughs> added on to it. So it's going to be water purposes only um, for using it for whatever they need in their pool or whatever. So that's going to be in construction here in Coral. So that's basically all I have. Frank, I was going to ask you, uh, in the dealing with the sludge related issues, you had to call with the vendor, both the cars with the vendors, and they were always asking about our quarterly reports that had to do with the percent sediment or whatever it is. And I never knew how to answer it. <coughs> and I was told that you had the reports probably at home or at the water plant. So if when you generate those, can you provide us? Here with the so what are you needing? Are you needing the TSS or are you needing TSS. the extended solids or all so, of that? Actually, I think it was all of it. The solids was one that So the solids, April gets in every month or every week, weekly. Okay. And she can make a copy for you too. Yes, cool. Well, it's not for me, but so that they're well, here and yeah. if I get a call, I go, April, where's this? And yeah. so anything Well, anything and right just being team. truthfully, if there's anything with a vendor or anything like that, they yeah. need to contact the operator. Okay. Because my thing about it is, is if you tell them one thing wrong, then it could be a big issue. And I'm not saying you don't know nothing about anything with wastewater or water side. Right. 
but there's a lot of Spanish words out there. <laughs> you know, that you're, 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 you know, talking about, and you know, uh, I mean, you know, they ask about BODs or anything like that, you know what that is already, but it's just a point. They are, you know, half time. If it's a vendor trying to sell something, I'm not going to go talk to the mayor, because I don't want a part of it, because I already got what I mean. Right. So, um, but if it's, you know, anything like that, uh, Dealing with DNR or anything, normally 9 out of 10, they want to talk to the operator. Yeah, of course. And, so. and, I, and I ain't got a problem with getting paperwork. She can, she can set that up. She's got it on file here every, every you know, because we only do, like, our big our big test. We only do that, um, you know, every three months. So it's every quarter. So there's four quarters a year, so we only do one test every three months. The big test now, TSS, um, or spinning solids is that only, huh? Is that one weekly? Yeah, it's weekly. Now, TSS, TSS total suspended solids. Yeah, total okay. suspended solids. So I don't do them uh, all the time because mm -hmm. I kind of look at my uh, suspended solids. But if I see something going on, like right now with the plant and mm -hmm. uh, what it's trying to do, um, I took one and they checked it out for me. Yes, mm -hmm. it is high. Um, but I can't help that. Right. Um, but as soon as the sledge falls, everything will hopefully go back and get operations. So, yeah. um, and the only reason why I have reports at home is because I don't have internet. Mm -hmm. No, I understand. So that. I take it all home and put it on the computer at home. So yeah. uh, our April got my set up down here too, so on Friday I've got to come down here and get tapes. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's good for the board. I want to thank you for, uh, for all you've done. I've watched you, you know, look, uh, breaking cakes up and stuff like that. And uh, it's really amazing to see uh, what you do on a daily basis and, yeah. and how much we need it. You know, so thank you. You want more time? Parks, cemetery, animal control. Okay, as far as parks, I guess I'll look uh, April on the poll. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's all, really all I have right now. We can talk about that. Uh, the damaged monuments in the cemetery. The I found out that the Foundation for the Restoration of St. Genevieve, which is a private group, they have the same issues that we would have okay. because the lots are, you know, owned by the families and they're supposed to maintain it. But basically, what the foundation does, they put their best effort to get approval from the owner of the cemetery, which is either the archdiocese or the city, and then the family, before they can do anything to the monuments. So I think they, you know, really the best bet would be to have this be performed by some private organization as opposed to the city. I'm not opposed to going up and taking some photos of the damaged monuments and trying to contact the family to, to make them aware of the damage and see if we can get them to repair. Yeah. Yeah. I had a question in the budget uh, where it's, you know, big, I always look at the percent utilized year to date. And on the cemetery, we had, you know, a couple thousand dollars at the beginning of the year, <coughs> or two and a half. Is that for mowing or what is those fun it's all for mowing, right? Okay. okay. Animal, I don't have any issues, no cows, no chickens? Well, there was a murdering dog rock because, and I think it's the, from that first house on Cemetery Road, because I walked by there in the morning oh, well. and uh, I saw it out in that field uh, on, across from the grain elevator, that, uh, yeah. the grain elevator taken down the big bunny or something like that, or a groundhog. So uh, that, that's run loose. And it was a, it was a tricolor, a larger uh, black dog that looked like it was part collie. Cool. And the significance of that is that, you know, dogs don't go, I'm only going to kill a bunny today. It's like whatever they have a prey drive, predator drive, mm -hmm. whatever they see, whether it be someone's cat or a smaller dog or whatever, sure, that they'll they'll take it down. And then once they start doing that, if there's a little kid running, oh sure, then they may game on, game on, or something. Either their heels or something. So it's still uh, an ongoing issue. 
Did the house with the $5 a month buy a baby or They're getting rehomed okay. and they're, yeah, they're there. Um, That's all I have. All right. Citizen participation. Anybody want to talk? Second. 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 Second.